frosting. And this lady came out from the uh, Midwest and, you know, very, very white. Her name is Mildred Frosting. And what she came with, not seeing color like most of us here, with the love of Christ. The, the, the title of the sermon today is Grow, Glow, and Go. Mm -hmm. This is one of her mantras. She would want to teach you to grow, encourage you to glow, and encourage you to go. That's all about it. Father in heaven, we thank you very much for your Holy Spirit that moved Mildred Rustin to Hawaii. And all of the missionaries that went out. And here we are, a cause and effect of wonderful missionaries. Funded by you, they energy by you and in their mindset to come and save us for you, for our Holy Spirit to meet you in you eternity. Father in heaven, I ask you to help Lord Jesus Christ not to lift up Mildred Rusty, but to lift you up as she followed you. And I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that we continue with Mildred Rustin's saying of grow, glow, and go. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I thank God because our Father in heaven really gave it all on the cross. You know, exemplifying compassion. Going to the most places which need compassion. And thank God because he earnestly did that to the very end. And to be able to be a part of a movement, the Dora Faith Church, that she didn't know hardly anybody, this church here, the first of her Dora Faith churches, that actually had a building and a home. There was a building, Auntie, in Kanaka Kai, that was moved here. Auntie has that wonderful history, and I thank God for that. Because it is not far when we're looking at patterns of ministry and the proven, the proven evidence of that pattern. So when we look at old school religion, and that old school way of sending ministers out and being able to be a part of it here, standing here in the flesh from the stories of oh, and from my auntie, and here we are, being able to accomplish the task at hand and knowing that the Great Commission is there. All we know about the wiles of the enemy, but our commission is to go out and to say with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to be able to keep in step with Him, to be able to move with the grace with Him, to be able to seek the lost souls and continue that, that, that bearing, tough one, because the fight against the enemy is real. But one thing about Jesus is He talks about being able to withstand all the fiery darts in Ephesians, being able to stand with love and being able to understand that Jesus Christ came for the ungodly. Amen. Jesus came for the, the thieves, the people that we look at and go, oh, but this is where he's calling us to pull our little holy cross hairs on them, send the prayer. Because we all had a chance to be wallowing like the pagan of mud. 
We cannot teach the pig to be like a clean cat. Always clean himself. Guess what? We clean the pig. He go back, he shouldn't die, he go back in the mud. But these people that we need to touch is the ungodly. Ooh, I gotta take a breath. Because in John 17, he talks about sanctifying them with the word and the truth. Giving them the full measure of joy with peace and truth. And that, that gives them a complete life with Christ. I want to go to uh, Ephesians 2, 19. In Ephesians 2, 19, Therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God. This is God, but I'm having the last say, and you're all gonna be my citizens. There's gonna be no more strangers about you, no more foreigners about you, and you will be fellow citizens. I thank God because we are then put in the category with saints, my sisters and brothers, saints. Look at each other and say, hi, we're in the category of now we're saints. Because we're receiving this Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? And we're also putting the foundation, with the foundation of apostles, prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone. And being a part of his church. And we're also individually made. And to be a part of that church being built. That inclusiveness of you, your personal life, your children, your family, and your ohana. I thank God because he has also included the ungodly. Now these are the patterns of saving souls of Mildred Prostick. Action in living faith knows no defeat. And the systems that she had, the repetitively systems of sharing grace throughout the time and throughout the islands and being white, time was not a favorable color. But in Jesus Christ she knew action in living faith knows no defeat. Her beginning to be understanding about how our people was going through the challenges and being able to justify the ungodly. The system and the repetitive systems caused churches to be grown throughout these islands. And this is one of them. And the pattern is God had a hand in it. Amen. Amen. And the hand in it was from the beginning of our salutations in the morning to the evening. And I thank God in Romans 5, God justifies the ungodly. God justifies the ungodly. He came to save those who repeatedly ask and say, I am and I have saved. We repent. We get justified, we get cleansed, we get sanctified, we begin to move in this rightness. But sometimes we get deceived with simple sin. We get deceived by the simple sin. And that's where our self-righteousness can be a delusion. And that we can be saved when we look back at our day and count out 80,400 seconds and we split it into 40,000 seconds. What have I been doing? Now when we look at the lost and how we can move with this grace, it's a tough one. Because we have our agenda. And when we know that the forgiveness of sin can be forgiven, the dead can come alive, the sick can be healed, and the blind eyes can be opened. And that's why the gospel of Jesus Christ came into this world. To save the ungodly. He leaves no one behind. And here we are. Discussing about Jesus Christ. Preaching about how wonderful he is. And God is saying in Isaiah 55. My ways are hard. You can talk all you want about this rubbish, but I want you to go grab them and save them. I'm like, oh my 
my God, the people that I don't want to be around, you're calling me to be around. It's the unmeasurable generosity that he gives us that was spoken earlier on how to keep our doors open with grace. And the fact of it, in Christ, this grace we can lead to saving the lost soul. And sometimes we'll lay a guilt trip. Oh, because you're not this or you're not that. And God is saying, but the ungodly are chosen for me, for you to share. That's the ministry in itself. Yeah. And a ministry for me. Because he not only came for us on Moloka, he came for the world. He loved the world. And I thank God because that's the matter of love that is great. That we could be restored from sin made whole. Made whole in the faith that we have. Now faith could be a simple faith. It is a simple word. But it requires a little bit more knowledge of God. A little bit more belief of God. And being able to have the fullness of faith that would be able to look at God and be free of the penalty of sin when we repent. Free. Hallelujah. Free from the penalty of sin from when we repent. And be able to use God's power to control and see sin and go, oh, there you are. The power to see sin and to be able to be presently sinless. When we repent in Jesus' name, there is an atonement. Because Jesus died for our sins on the cross in 1 Corinthians 5, uh, 15, 3. Jesus appeared and took away sins, John 1, 1 John 3, 5. His mere appearance took away sin. He saved us from the fires of hell. And, and he saved us from sin in Matthew 1, 21. The bunch of scriptures that leads to being, us being saved is a whole bunch. I'm just going through the little ones. The little ones that are supposed to be easy for us to understand. That our Lord just loves us so much with these simple words. And it will take the heart in heart. Ezekiel 36, 26. And to build your will. Being able to have this faith and the knowledge of this faith. Like in Romans 10, 14. Faith cometh by hearing. And guess what? We need a preacher. We need a sermon. We need a sermon. We need a, a Bible sharing. We need to be able to show up with grace. Because we're all being in the process of being saved. Through faith we are saved. Ephesians 2, 8. And these three things with knowledge, belief, and trust in God, that this trust is a greater trust. This trust is a believing in the word of God that he did die on the cross for me. And this belief is not just a belief that this chocolate bar is chocolate, but it is a belief of the Holy Spirit that causes you to have more knowledge on seeking knowledge. Why? Because... For told knowledge is coming in us, we can be able to understand. I thank God in Romans 9:10, it talks about how we must trust. How we must trust in the name of God. And how in 55, Isaiah 5, in 55, trust cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Now we as Lovers of Jesus Christ have not a common faith. This faith is not a common faith. This faith is built on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This faith is an elevation for us to endure when times that we need to endure. This faith is built with the blood of Jesus Christ. 
This faith is with the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And then he rose again for you and I that sins may be forgiven. My sins and your sins be forgiven. And we are set free. Amen. No more guilt. No more hila hila. We are set free. Hila hila guilt no more. That we can focus on getting the task at hand because we're not worried about our task because he took care of it. Being able to take care of the lost souls, where he will help you to keep your back. As C.C. and Daniel moves here in serving God, who's watching her for a baby in the desert? Jesus Christ himself and the angels. We go up concerned sometimes about the little ones. Yes, they are our little ones. But we have a mighty God with a long hand and a far reach. I thank God because in John 6, 36, he says he will never cast us out. And that's one of the promises that we have. When we endure him in the word of God and continue to fellowship and continue to have this belief, eternal life is given unto us. We set an example. We set an example of how beautiful and how much God Intellect is in this plan. Who would ever think? Giving your sons on the cross for my sin. It has to be God. It has to be God. Because no sci-fi movie would come up with such beauty and love. Tell me, they would capitalize on these kind of movies for the sake of money. But only God can come up with this plan of salvation for the whole world and for the ungodly that we could be used. So as we grow, as we glow, as we go beyond our comfort zone, we are being saved. We are being saved in Christ and we are being built in Christ. We're still constantly being built and this process that God has given us, and it moves us from glory to glory. It moves us from peak to peak. And as a person that loves the ocean, we know we must stay on the high part of the ocean. Because the lulls is where things can happen. And I thank God because even in his wrath of disobedient children, there's that spirit it wants to save the ungodly. Amen. And it's us. It's us being used by God today. It's the Holy Spirit that can teach us to know that we don't want the wrath of God on our children. We don't want the wrath of God in our community. But we want our community to be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. As Sister Brock said, plan, Mildred's plan, this little lady about this high moved throughout the islands. She left the patterns of churches throughout the islands. There was definitely two on Kauai, almost, I think, three or four on, um, that's not home churches, but actually buildings on a big island, three, four on Maui, one here, I think four on Oahu. Little lady, powerful in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> she went forth wanting to save, uh, save souls. And Brother Umi, Pastor Umi, Bill Umi, was a product of Miss Brostick. She went out, got these young men, or women on the street. They never went to seminary. But she said, you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Go out and you'll have a church to be able to be able actually be at. She had churches all over the island. She, she had this faith, I would say kind of uncanny with the Holy Spirit. Backwards with the Holy Spirit. When we think of our way of how things should be done. But with the Holy Spirit, it was done. I'm a product of it. This building is a product of it. This is forensic evidence of God. So this movement,
can giddy up a little bit with the Holy Spirit, or we can slow down a little bit. But this spur and this time, and what's going on in the world today, it cannot. So we support missions in prayer to Tara. We support missions to Halaba. We support missions where they need to be gone. And I would know when Pastor Joe goes to uh, Colorado, Colorado, he's going to be on a mission. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, this is your word of the day. My children that love God, my brothers and sisters that love God. And I will close with a prayer. Bless you, Pastor Joe. And it's time. And you all, thank you, Pastor Joe, for continuing the work of Brother Bill for me. That here we are. We can continue your work. Mildred Frostick has planted seeds on Momo Time. Here we are. We can product from it. So we can go. We can grow. We can grow. And this water that you give us, John 4, 14, it's an eternal life that we never thirst again. We not seek other follies that may have attraction because we have drunk your water and we are most satisfied with eternal life. And this bubbly water, John 4, 4 14, goes to you and be a part of your spirit, a part of your na'al that glows, a part of your na'al that gives you the energy to help our neighbor, the caregiver. And that's part of what you want us to do in life, to continue as we are being saved to the process and as we are doing your work to the process. Your Holy Spirit will be with us. And we are Christ-built children. Born of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is your message for today. I'm going to call our worship team. And Father in heaven now, as they come up, I want to bless our children for the loss I'm all kind, Charter Island, that ministers, minister to their heart. Why? They're not out. They're being that they can be cleansed, that God has a plan for the ungodly. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen.